Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, along with Sarah. Hello. And we are here for our regular Friday live stream. I missed you last week. Uh, it was a little discombobulating to be wandering. I was like, I have all of Friday free. I don't. But we still came to your house and visited Jason, all Julie day. and I. You know, it was so <laughs> funny because Jason's like, we should have done the live stream. Sarah and I should have done the live stream. I, I, I and I said, done it on. you should have. That would have been awesome. Well, he draws these little things because my husband's name is Jason. And he draws these little faces called Jace faces. So he could have drawn He could have been the artist and I would have still been hot. That's perfect. <laughs> so I think that we're gonna have to do that some week. He's oh, gonna have boy. to fill in for me, and he's gonna have to teach everyone how to do, do his Jay's face. <laughs> <laughs> like that would have been so awesome. I think everyone would have appreciated that. <laughs> I bet they would have. <laughs> um, today we are going to paint um, a couple cherries, and we're gonna be working in layers. And um, I actually I put some colors here. These are the colors that I use, but then I realized that those two reds. Are pretty close but neither of them have the vibrancy that I wanted to so I decided instead of using both of those I was gonna uh, switch to permanent alizarin crimson by da Vinci it's a PV 19 color you just want a nice deep dark cool red basically whatever you have um, even if you just a Carmen or um, alizarin crimson you could use those those are just fine but I really like this color I decided that I think I'm gonna get a fresher look this seem to look a little bit muted or dull to me um, after I was looking at it, so um, so that's what we're going to do. So disregard the two reds that I wrote on my blog. Just uh, just use a PB19 red or a Lizard Crimson, something really cool and and transparent for your red. Uh, this video is brought to you by Jerry'sArtorama.com. You can find the supplies that I'm using linked up in the video description, and there is a coupon code for free shipping, and I think it's 20% off your order. Um, and there are some exclusions. All that information is in the video description. If you have some shopping to do, might as well try a coupon. Some things might are as well. Might as well. Might as well. At least get your free shipping anyway. Um, and we are going to draw right on our paper. So you're just going to need a pencil and a just a soft eraser if you need to erase anything. So. I think that about covers that. Uh, if you have questions, make sure you type the word question in all caps. That will help Sarah kind of catch it so she can see it. And um, then she can relay it to me or the moderators can help you out if it's a question that's been asked many times. Um, so we'll make sure you know what you need to know. And please keep your, your questions to watercolor so that um, this is super useful for the folks watching in the replay. Um, this photo, I do have a link to this reference photo in the video description if anybody wants to print it out and go by that. I am going to keep this on screen as we work because I think that will be helpful. And the website I found this from is a place called Pexels. And um, it's a new website to me that some that I, a viewer told me about. And it's all royalty-free um, images that are free. So give it, give it a check out. It is sponsored by some other big... Um, uh, graphics places so I think that's why it's free I know graphic stock does sponsor over there and they are a great uh, resource as well and that's where I found that so I'm just gonna very lightly sketch on um, my cherries here and I'm gonna soften my lines in a minute so don't worry if it looks a little dark I want you to be able to see it while we're sketching this on so basic kind of like um, this one's kind of more like an egg this one's a little bit rounder Move this down a little bit lower. Since this is such a simple um, sketch, I'm just going to do it right on my paper. The stems. The stems are really pretty. I love the the look of them. And. Make it work for your paper. If it's too too long for your paper, you can shorten it up. So you know we got basic lines and we got circles. So nothing. If you have any extraneous lines, go in with your eraser and take them away. And I like these plastic ones because they're really um, soft and they don't mar your paper. Like like the pink erasers are pretty harsh on your paper. So. I try to avoid them. All right, and then um, a lot of times I'll actually just grab a brush and use that to brush the crumbs so I don't smear my pencil. 
this right here, this bottom cherry is looking a little funny to me, so I think I need to smooth it out a little bit. And this one is overlapping the other one slightly, so I just want to make sure that I have that represented. And just take your time getting your composition down, because once we start applying paint, um, you want to make sure you have a good, accurate sketch. And if you want to, you could always print that out and trace it if you are uncomfortable sketching. But it is a nice, easy one to try if you're uh, so inclined. All right, so we are going to start off with a round brush. You can use whatever you're comfortable with for this. This is going to be our first wash. And um, maybe I'll go with the number eight, just because we don't need to have that much water here. I'm going to take some yellow ochre, make a little puddle of that. I'm going to grab some of that red. And I will grab a little bit of the blue over here, ultramarine blue. Somebody asked me what the difference was between French ultramarine and regular ultramarine. Um, they're the same pigment. French ultramarine just generally is a little bit um, more violet. Uh, Joe Maisky, uh wanted to know if there was ti a time restriction on the coupon. Um, no, I don't believe so. Is if there, if there's any issues with it, just let me know, and um, and we'll make sure that we change it. But I do not believe so. They didn't give me one when they gave it when they signed it. Uh, gave that one to me. So I'm gonna go in. I did not wet my paper first, um, but I do have fair, very watery paint, so my paint's really light. I'm going in and I'm putting in any place I see kind of these yellowy tones. And the reason I'm using yellow ochre is because it's such a subtle color. It lifts well, and it um, it sets a really nice atmosphere without making everything orange. And actually, you can go right up the stem with that yellow ochre as well. <clears throat> Oh, before I do though, I don't want to have those, um, I don't want to have double lines if I where I went over that. I just want to make sure that I have that a little. I had both the lines, both stems there intersecting. I didn't want to have that in my final painting. If you are more comfortable wetting the paper first, you can, but um, we're going in with yellow ochre first. It's very liftable, very easy to soften if we need to. Uh, Grace Anishak, what do you do when your paints are dried up and cracked? Is there anything I can do? Um, spritz them with some water and you can put like a drop of glycerin in there and that will help the paint retain its moisture and that's why it's cracking on you because it doesn't have the moisture. Please uh, just disregard the sound of the telephone. <laughs> I always forget to uh, to remove it. it. Yeah, it's all right. I always have the ringer up loud because it's so hard to hear around here sometimes. So now I have some, uh, just the red on its own. And so many calls lately for like from politicians and from um, like nonprofit solicitors. Rhonda McGee, why did you use graphite to draw the cherries instead of watercolor pencils? Um, because I didn't want to lose my lines. I wanted the lines to stay um, pretty crisp. And I find a lot of times with the watercolor pencil, I lose my lines too quickly. Now I want to lift off the highlight there. So I'm just um, folding my paper towel and going in there and just trying to take that out. And also those little Highlight in the center I want to lift out. We're staying really light for this. We're going to be building up a lot of layers. I've got to 
eraser booger in there. Had to, had to get away. All right, I'm going to go over here, work on this one a little bit. The shadows on the under the cherry um, were a little challenging for me in the little in the little sample one I did, so I'm going to take more care when we're working on that, not to get it too dark. We'll save that for closer to the end. So we have kind of a reflection on the bottom of this cherry. It's like the the um, I would say it's like the table kind of reflecting up. And I will say that this photo, um, I printed this on the Soho Artists um, paper, the, the digital art paper, because so I want to have a really good print. That's also from Jerry's Autorama. I want to have a really good print for that. Um, but it, I, I noticed it came out a lot more yellow. I think it's my printer wasn't calibrated very well. So I'm going to try to keep that in mind as I paint that I don't make everything way too yellow. Make sure when you grab your paint that you are adding water to it and making sure that it's all dispersed so you're not going in with too much color. I think when you're trying to paint something that looks like a like kind of more photographic, um, it's very important to work in layers and to adjust little bits at a time so you can catch those subtle the subtlety. And that's what makes it look less like a cartoon and more like a um, more like a photograph. All right, I'm going to go back in and lift like I did on the other one. So I want to get that center highlight out. And um, if you want, you can have a gel pen handy. We may use a gel pen for highlights on the end. We'll see how it looks and if we need it. Karen Emmeth, I have a hard time lifting paint to create highlights. Seems to be an issue regardless of the brand of paint I use. Could it be the paper? Um, yeah, it can be the paper. A lot of times wood pulp papers do not lift as well. So if your paper is cellulose um, or if it doesn't have a lot of sizing in it, it will be more difficult to lift. So that is definitely um, that's definitely an issue that you might have. So what I'm doing here is just touching the paper with the back of my hand and it feels cool to the touch so I know I can go in um, on the stems. Now you can stick with this brush if you want to. I think I will go down a size. I'm using brushes from the Mimic set, the value set from Jerry's. So um, all, these, all these brushes were in that set, which is nice. And I do have a little scrubber, my little Maxine's mop that I love uh, in case we need to bring out more highlights at the end. So it's a good idea to have something similar to that. Now I'm going to make a brown, and I decide not to use brown on my palette. Instead, I'm going to take my red and my green and mix them together, and that's going to give me a beautiful brown. And if, you're, if you don't have that Sennelier olive green, use sap green. Now if I want to darken that brown, I'll just grab a little um, ultramarine blue. And we're working on dry paper, so almost this entire thing is done wet on dry. And I'm just looking at the darker spots that I see here. I like to get my dark values in. Not, not every watercolorist likes to do that. They like to build up slowly, but I like to have some dark values in on my picture just because it helps me be a little braver with my color. If I just work in really, really light layers, I can get to the end and realize, oh, I never got anything dark enough and I have to go back in and do all that work. So just by putting in these dark shadows here on the stem, that's going to help me uh, establish the values for the rest of the painting. All right, so I'm going to rinse my brush off. I'm going to work on the stem that's in behind that's attached to that flower, that uh, cherry. And I'm going to grab, and I know that's too yellow, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab the, um, the olive green. And I am going to add some of that here and there, and then I'll spread it out a little bit. Now, this is one in, is in behind, so I just want to make sure that I do not paint over the stem in front. trying to keep my hand out of the way. How many people do we have joining us today? We are at 313. Nice. Yes. 
I did do an impromptu live last week and I uh, painted some lilacs. It was Saturday night and Jason took the girls to their softball game because it was one Sunday morning too, so we decided to split sh split the shifts. And I took the Sunday morning one, he took the Saturday night one, so I'm like, well, hmm. I feel like painting. I bet other people do too. <laughs> yeah, really. The birds were singing. It was very lovely. The door open. It was mm, quite nice. Nice out. Uh, what was the red color you decided to use today? Permanent alizarin crimson, okay. and it is the it's a PV nineteen one, which is uh, light fast versus the original alizarin crimson, or it's also called called a quinacridone alizarin crimson because it's done with a quinacridone pigment. But that one's just a nice, really crisp red. And that, that one is by Da Vinci, but it doesn't matter what brand you use. And what color was the brown? We mixed things. that with our olive green and our crimson. And, and to darken it, if it came out too chocolatey, you add a little bit of ultramarine. And I'm just taking some of that brown and just kind of streaking it on there. Almost dry brushing so it grabs a little bit of the texture of the paper. And I want it a little bit less as I come down the stem so I'm not reloading. Although at the base of it I can like kind of stipple on a little bit more. Stippling is just when you tap your brush and you put like little dots of color down. Just make sure that the the if you're resting your hand on your on your paper while you're working that your hand is clean. Just dry brushing there. I don't know if you can hear my brush, but it does not have a lot of paint on it. And then if I want like a, a spot of brown, I just kind of dab it, just stipple it on. All right, now I am going to go move down to this cherry because the one next to it's pretty dry and I'm gonna start putting in uh, some of the darker areas just because I like to again get those darker values in and I'm going to grab the crimson and I think I'm gonna start with my darkest values with this I this is not as dark as it's going to be because we will be kind of mixing some and making some purpley color But I'm just kind of tapping it in. All right, go ahead. I want to go right up to the um, right up to my graphite marks. You probably won't see any pencil lines when we're done. Go ahead. Uh, Hannah Marie, have you ever tried the Stadler watercolor crayons? Yes, I have. Not for a long time though, but I do remember them being pretty good. CXVD7. Which of the Prima mar marketing watercolor palettes would you recommend? Tropical, pastel. Uh, if you could only pick one, I would go with Tropical because you have the best mixing palette there. You can mix uh, but everything you need with the Tropicals. Uh, what color do you usually use for shadows? It depends on what I'm painting. Now when I get to an edge here, and I don't want to just leave it like that because I don't have such a hard edge there. I'm going to clean my brush and blot it, and then I'm just going to tap on the edges and that's just going to soften that out because I'm not ready to commit to any real strong um, lines yet. Now I'm going to go over here into this crease same thing in this, this dark color. I'm going to move my palette over just a little bit so I, have, so I can have my hand resting on the table and not on my paper. But again, this is just our crimson. Watch out for any beads on your ferrule. You don't want water on the ferrule because it's going to slide down and uh, give you a big bunch of water where you don't want it. So by going right along this crease, I'm going to be keeping a nice sharp edge where I want that highlight. Then I'm just tapping. There's a certain, not really dented, but this like the texture is kind of firm, but it's got these kind of like 
uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's not super smooth. It's smooth, but it's not like perfectly smooth. Uh, Mayor Magoo, which brand of ultramarine granulates the most, and does pan versus tube impact the amount of granulation? No, pan versus tube won't won't impact it. I find that Daniel Smith uh, ultramarine blue probably granulates the most. Uh, CXVD7, have you tried the Legion watercolor paper? I almost used that today because I have a sample of it, but I have not even, I, I kind of forgot that I'd gotten that sample, so I haven't yet, but um, but I do plan to because I just, I've been in a major decluttering, you know, <laughs> I don't know, episode, whatever, <laughs> and I've like been coming across all these things that I forgot I had, and that was one of them. I've heard uh, Steve from the Mind of Watercolor said it's really good. And by the way, Marty Owens from Owings Art and Steve from the Mind of Watercolor have a live stream at 2 p.m. today. It's either 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and I think it's going to be like a Q&A. So I would definitely check that out. They're really great guys. And they didn't even ask me to say anything. I'm just saying it because nice. they're awesome. Because, because you can. Uh, Taylor Morrissey, is it better to use paint in palettes that you buy or to use paints from tubes? It doesn't matter, really. It's just as long as the quality um, is good. Like the um, like this is a combination. The pet, the kit I have here was the Sennelier. There's a good special. It's like um, 12 plus 6, so you get 18 for the price of 12. So I have those in there. And then I also have some Windsor & Newton um, paint, like half pans in here as well. So that I have filled out a tube. So it doesn't matter, honestly. Um, sometimes you luck out and you can find a set that's got the colors you want, and then you'll probably save money by buying the set versus buying a bunch of tubes. And then as you run out, I recommend buying a tube in the color you need and then just refilling. Because I do think in the tube it's a little bit cheaper, like a little bit more affordable to, to do it that way versus buying your colors, um, buying them in pans, especially in the United States. We, pans are not as common. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit more of the yellow, build up those yellows. Uh, JLT 110 110, how can you tell how much sizing is in the paper? Um, if you dropped some water on it, you could see if the water beads up, then it would be a pretty heavily sized paper. But it, it's kind of with experience because I know Arches has a good amount of sizing in it. I really like the sizing in Arches. I know Fabriano uh, does not have like... No, it just and different artists will prefer it depending on how they like to work so it just kind of experimentation sometimes they'll indicate it when you're ordering paper online it'll say like a heavily sized or internally and externally sized that's usually has a good amount of sizing in it but it's kind of personal preference and I think you're just a good idea is just to maybe try a sheet of a couple different kinds and then see what you like the best before investing like a big pack of it or anything uh, Amy Knudsen, I was gifted great sable brushes. Is it important to use soap to keep them newer? I only use soap on my brushes when I absolutely need to. Um, like after we did that cityscape and we using the Dr. P.H. Martin's uh, watercolors, my brushes needed to be soaped and washed because a rinse was not going to cut it. There was so much pigment in those brushes when I was done. But generally, I find just rinsing them in my my water bucket and then blotting them dry is all I need to do. You just don't want to let them sit in water. Um, and if mothballs or a cedar box or something, because um, they are natural material and uh, you know bugs and moths and things like that might go after them. I also want to let everybody know that um, this is the last week to get my watercolor course for half off. So uh, if you've been thinking about getting it, then um, that's a great time to. If you were, if you wanted to buy the class for a friend, I did figure out a way to do gift certificates. Those have to be, you just email me if you need a gift certificate because I can't do that through the Teachable platform. They don't have a gift certificate option, but 
um, but I can manually make one and then manually enroll the uh, the recipient. So if you know you want to buy that as a gift and you want to take advantage of the half off pricing, then just email me. Uh, Paula Haynes, I know you do a lot of reviews, but which brand of watercolor is your go-to brand for doing paintings you will sell? <sighs> There's so many good ones. Um, I really love M. Graham. I love Daniel Smith. Um, I love Sennelier. Windsor & Newton is kind of the tried and true one that's been around forever and easy to find, and they're good too. They're not my favorite, but they're good too. Um, like the, the children's book I was just working on, I did all with Windsor & Newton paints. Um, you know, there's so many good brands out there. I would say look what's available to you in your area and what is, you know, a decent price for a reputable brand and give it a try. And there's no rule saying you can't mix and match different brands either. So don't feel like, well, I've started buying Windsor Newton. Now I can't look at any other paints. It's not, it's not the case. You're not married to these paints. You're just, they're a tool. Now we're going to skip over to this stem. And we're going to do it much in the same way, except I don't want this stem to be quite as dark. I want it to stand out from the stem and back. So I am going to mix some of the olive and yellow ochre. So I get a little warmer of a green. And we're going to go in and paint that. So it's just subtly a little bit warmer. And I generally would be holding my brush closer to the end, but I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way and my hand out of the paint. So. Uh, CXBD7, I've heard quality watercolor paper is more important than quality watercolor paint. Would you agree? I would agree for the painting purpose. Yeah, if you're painting on bad paper, it can be very frustrating and not um, and not look that great. Poor quality paint um, is likely to fade quicker. You know, that's that's basically the, the, the issue there. Or it might not be as vibrant. It might be kind of chalky. Uh, question a is there how would you erase a spill on the background is there a way for it to completely go this uh -huh. particular person is from Greece and they're written and it's written in the native language so I don't have any way of knowing how to pronounce their name okay um, <laughs> and I'll, I'll try to speak slowly to make sure they can understand um honestly if I spilled on this background right now I would paint in a background because it's very difficult to get the paint completely off um, if it's a color like ultramarine or burnt sienna or something that does tend to lift all right, then what you can do is um, wet the area, brush back and forth with like a gentle scrubber like this Maxine's mop and just blot straight down and keep painting over with clear water and blotting until the stain is gone. Um, and then if that doesn't work, then you can go ahead and paint in the background. That, that actually happened to me during one of the paintings in my watercolor course I had and I was able to lift most of it off and it was it was the uh, crimson it was that like quinacridone red it was crazy bright but it's best if if it doesn't happen all right now I'm going to do the same thing I did with the brown clean my brush off I've got some mixed up here still and oh, by the way this is a number four round that I've been using for most of this and I can put in any little speckles by stippling. Just make sure that when you do a streak, you're going with the direction of the stem. Uh, Taylor Morrissey, if you could only have a few brushes, which ones would you make sure to grab? Um, I like to have like a number 10, anywhere between a number 8 and a 12 round. One of those, probably a 1 inch flat. And um, probably like a liner, which is a, a skinny brush with long, long bristles. All right, now we're going to work on the cherry on this one. And we're going to do the same thing we did before with the other one. We're going to make a nice puddle of our crimson. We're going to go in with our darkest area, which is here. And again, like I said before, this is not our dark. This is not as dark as it's going to get. We are going to go darker the next level, but this is giving us this this layer. And we are working on dry paper. The only time you would want to work wet and wet on this, and you don't even have to, would be when you are doing the um, initial wash. 
after that you want to keep it pretty um, pretty dry so you can control where everything's going and I'm not even fussing with dew drops yet I need a little water drops on there those can wait stippling is giving us that nice texture and now I just kind of added some water to my brush so I could make the stipples go a little bit lighter as we go out. Now I'm going to completely clean my brush, blot it, and then just soften the edges. Grace Anna Shack, on my hot press paper that isn't 100% cotton, why does it sit in a puddle and not flow? Um, there could be too much sizing in that. Sometimes with um, cellulose paper, you have the issue of having too much sizing. I would say if, if it's sitting in a puddle, that would be that would be why. Or it could be your paints maybe are um, have too much filler in them. But if those same paints are working fine on the cotton, that's probably um, something with the paper. You probably just maybe just use that that hot press paper if you do any rubber stamping use that for uh, stamping and water coloring because that would be suitable for that actually I might kind of sketch in this little water droplet there because there's quite a bit of dark behind it if you do get a little bit out of the lines and then just reshape the edge, just pull the edge out a little bit to smooth it in rather than trying to lift it up. Oh shoot, I got a big water drop right there actually. It's a learning lesson, it's yeah. a learning teaching moment, yay! All right, now I'm going to grab some of the yellow, yellow ochre and water. Haley Hope, what is your favorite affordable paper? Hmm, I would say it's probably Strathmore 400. It's the one with the brown label and you can find it at most big box craft stores. So you can use coupons on it too, which makes it even more affordable. And then clean my brush and just kind of soften out any edges. really train your eye to see all the little subtle bits of colors and the changes between them. And this style of painting might not be your cup of tea, but it's nice to try every style and see what uh, resonates with you and what you really like. And here I'm giving a bigger swishes of color to give more of the, the shine and that kind of smoother texture in that area. Uh, Mayor Magoo, is Senlier La Petite honey based? I have heard that they are not. Um, I bet they are because Senlier's uh, regular watercolors um, are honey based, and that's kind of one of their their big um, branding things. And I do believe there's a there's a B on the packaging of the the La Petite Aquarelle, and the fact that the La Petite Aquarelle acts so much like the professional line that I would be hard pressed to tell the difference. I even put some of them side by side in the review I did of them. And it was really tough to tell what was the professional and what was the, um, student. the student. It was a fantastic paint. One of the, probably one of the finest student grade paints. Uh, Alex Bury, have you tried fluid watercolor paper? I have only tried the, um, the, uh, cellulose. I haven't tried the cotton. 
and I didn't really like it that much. But it, but then again, it's a cellulose, not the cotton one. I've heard the cotton one's good, but I I didn't have any. I only had it because it came uh, free in an order. I think it I think I came free in actually one of my Jerry's orders. Oh my gosh, I was so I was so missing you when I was going live on my own because I like completely lost track. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. You should have called me. Well, I was I was kind of last minute, and I was like, oh, you're probably busy. <laughs> well, just I may be, but you always call. I'm, it's not like I have far to go. That's true. I'll call next time. Yeah, just call. I mean, if I'm busy, I'll say so, and then one of the assorted other family members around can help. Uh, Julia Tam, does Lindsay have any watercolor coloring book recommendations? One with actual watercolor paper. I know Prima has one, and I believe Christy Rice has one, Painterly Days, I think. I have not used, I've used the Prima one. The watercolor paper in the Prima book I didn't think was very good. It's kind of like a cheap student grade paper, but, you know, then again, it's, it is just a coloring book, so you know, you probably wouldn't be spending as much time as you would on a regular watercolor painting. Uh, Jasmine Vizuet, when my painting dries, it has this chalk-like feel to it. Is that normal or is it the paper and colors that make that feel? I use Canson watercolor mm -hmm. paper and Bionyo watercolor cake set. That, that would be the paint. Um, it just has a lot of filler in it because it's like a student uh, student grade paint. So, you know, as you as you use up colors, just maybe replace it with a tube of an artist quality paint. That that chalky feeling is a is a trademark of like paint with too much filler in it. And generally to get the price down uh, lower, they do that to a lot of student grade paints. Okay, now I'm gonna actually switch to a bigger brush and I am going to do some glazing I'm on this this uh, cherry over here and I am going to actually you know what I'm going to do one more layer I'm going to do a layer with some sh darker shadows before I do my glazing I'm going to take my crimson and add some ultramarine to it so I get kind of like a, a purple color you want a pretty liquid but you don't want it to um, you don't want it too watery because it's got to have some dark to it so I'm going to go and get my darks in there before I do any glazing. And when we glaze, it's going to smooth things out. So that's why we need to do our stippling now because it's going to smooth a little bit. This stippling is what gives it that, uh, the flesh that slightly, that firm but slightly textured appearance. Uh, hi, Co. Does Fabriano Artistico have a right side up? I've lost the watermark and can't see any texture difference between the sides. Oh, I've used both sides of that. I haven't had any issue. There's only one paper that I know that's really one side only. And I think it's called like Indigo or Indigo. Yeah, I think it's called like Indigo Art Papers or something. Something similar to that. They have a uh, well, only one size, side is sized, I believe. But that's unusual. Most paper you can use both sides or either or. They might have a slightly different texture, but it's whatever you prefer. Mix up a little bit more of that dark color. And we're going to go over, let's see, do I have enough on there? I think I have enough on this one. I'm going to go over here and add the shadow onto this cherry as well. And we will heat, we will heat set this um, just to make sure it's really dry before we go over to glaze so we don't end up with um, any lifting where we don't want it. And that, so that, our light source is kind of above and over here, so we do see that stem kind of reflected and shadowed onto the other cherry there. 
uh, Bev Roberts. What is the Ganzai Tambi paint good for? I have a burning desire to buy them, but if they are chalky, like cheap watercolor, I won't like them. They're not so much chalky as they are glossy. They've got like a little bit of a resin in them um, because of the, the style of paint that they are. They're, they're great for mixed media because they are a little more opaque. They're opaque, but not really chalky, if that makes sense to you. They have, they're really great for stamping because you can control where the paint goes. It doesn't want to flow as much as like a um, traditional watercolor, especially if the paper's not too wet. It will flow somewhat though. I used it, I uh, used those for my craftsy class and um, they're very rich pigmented, but if you get them on real thick, then you're going to get kind of like a, um, like a glossy spot. And I really like the pans when the, when, I'm, when the paint, when the paint is out, I plan on, um, using the pans for colors that I use a lot, like ultramarine and uh, burnt sienna colors that I am always wishing I had a bigger pan of. So, I mean, you get all those really awesome pans. Not that I'm going to try to enable you or anything, but. <laughs> Just a little. I'm a sucker for containers. If something comes in a cool package, and I have to have it. Brenda Collins Deeks, do you know what weight a Strathmore watercolor block with a red cover is? All it has in the front is Alexis watercolor 24 sheet block 9 by 12. I've never heard of that line, so I'm not sure. Huh. Maybe does Strathmore, I'm assuming Strathmore would have a website. Maybe they yeah, that maybe would, some information there. It might be new. I've heard Strathmore has a new line of products for like um, bookstores and um and toy stores and stuff. So I wonder if that might be that line. I'm glazing a little yellow ochre over this front stem because I feel like it's uh, too much like the other one. And I feel like I want this one to stand out a little bit more. So warming it up will help that. And then I'm grabbing some of my mixed brown, which if you remember was the green and the red. And I'm adding a little bit up here to the top of this stem. I think I need a little bit more red in there. Maybe a little yellow ochre too. Kind of let it orange up a little bit. And I'm going to add that here and there in this other stem as well. I want to shadow this stem and back. I just took a little bit of that olive green brownish mix and added a little more blue to it. And I'm just putting that on the stem and behind help separate them a bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of that at the base of this stem, too. If you have any questions, get them ready, because I'm going to be drying my painting in a second, and I can take a couple questions when I do that. Uh, Moon Ram, does the Dr. Peach Martin Hydras and Bombay India inks dry with a sheen? The Bombays do, if it's used thickly, the um, the watercolors shouldn't. But if you're like using it on a really um, slick paper, like a UFO paper, then, then it might have a sheen to it in the thick spots. Do we have any other questions? Uh, not at the moment, but I'm sure they'll start coming through. Alex Erskine, Princeton Neptune, or Mimic Squirrel? Um, they're equally good. Either one. All right, so now I am going to go with a bigger brush. Um, I think I'll use a number eight, though, just so it's not too big. And I am just going to grab some of this red on its own for my glazing. I'm going to clean up my palette there so I have room for some fresh paint. So when you glaze, even though I'm just using one color for this glaze, I don't want to work right from the pan because I might end up with a glob. So you still want to make a puddle of it, even though you are um, essentially just using one color. Make sure that you don't have any lumps or clumps on your brush. And this glaze is going to help unify everything. So I think I'll start, I'll start with this one since I can work um, 
kind of towards my right and not smear my hand in it. And I'm just going to start up here. I will avoid some areas that I want to be light. But I also need to tone down that highlight, so I'm just going to go right over that highlight. And I'm working with pretty um, bold, smooth strokes because I'm trying to pull back some of the smoothness now in the cherry because we, we lost some of the smoothness with the stippling, which we needed, we needed to establish that texture too. So that was important for us to do that. But now we want to get a little bit of that smoothness back. Uh, Demetri Demetrius Cargianis, apologize, I probably said that wrong. Uh, I see that you use mainly one paintbrush. What size is it, and is it synthetic? Yes, it's a Mimic Number no. Eight. It is um, a synthetic squirrel, so it acts like a red squirrel brush, but it um, but it no is no squirrel, were harmed. right? No squirrels were harmed. I'm going to soften the edge here on that highlight. And I'm going to grab some yellow ochre. Make sure I don't have any clumps. And I'm going to go in where I need the yellow ochre. Uh, Ashton Mack, when I use my credit card scraper on wet paint, it looks fine. But when the paint dries, the lines go away. What am I doing wrong? Maybe not scraping hard enough. If you um, if if it doesn't end up scratching the paper, then it can disappear. You can also, if you do think you're scraping hard enough, glaze over it with another color, and that color will sink in, and then you'll get that look that you're after. I'm just gonna blot up here a little bit to get a little bit of that reflection back. And now I'm gonna go over to this one. Same idea. smooth strokes so we can get the the smooth firm texture they look delicious thank you i do love fresh cherries not the maraschino cherries only the fresh ones i like them both i love those rainier ones that are well it's funny they were talking about the rainier ones because it would the one went before you put the wash this last wash on they mm -hmm. looked very similar to mount rainier cherries mm -hmm. i do buy a small bag when they do come up to maine for like the three weeks that we get them yeah they're so good. And they're usually like five dollars a pound, but John doesn't eat cherries, so I can buy just a little bag for myself. <laughs> I'll go through them like crazy. I I love it when they have them at Sam's Club because then I can get like a big thing of them. Mm. I only buy a little small because I John doesn't eat them. It's just me, yeah. and I can you know I love cherries. We can only eat so many in a sitting. <laughs> I got I have three kids. I can go through them like crazy. Yes, I have no children, so. And go in with the yellow ochre. And it's kind of a balance because you don't want things to get muddy or orangey. So that's why you get to clean your brush and work in layers. Be uh, be willing to turn your paper as you're going so that you get the most comfortable angle so you don't end up with rough edges. Excuse me. My goodness. Good coffee this morning. I had an extra cup because I got so much sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working on my cold Ugh. leftover coffee. <laughs> I need to get an insulated uh, mug. I probably have one around here somewhere. Or you did, and it's now disappeared into the great depths somewhere. Yeah, well, I, I hate water bottles because they don't go in the dishwasher, but the insulated cups do. So a lot of times I'll give the kids like their 
water in like a coffee mug <laughs> like for bedtime because I hate to wash all the yeah the uh, the mugs when they when the kids finally like turn in all their dirty dishes yeah. from their rooms and you have like a sink full of water bottles. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow ochre to some of those highlights because they just seem a little bit harsh. All right, I'm gonna dry this and then um, I'm gonna work on the shadow underneath. We're not completely done with those cherries, the flesh of the cherries yet, but I wanna give my eyes a break. They're looking all right though. I'm looking at the monitor because sometimes it's really hard to just keep looking at the same painting. They're looking great for my end. <laughs> and that's why it's great to take a break while you're working because it's so hard to see what you're what you really got going on. All right, so I want to show you the situation with the shadow here and what I did in my um, practice piece that wasn't really correct. So I would the, the shadow is very strange on these. You've got yellow, like a, a reflection right up against the cherry, that yellow kind of halo. And then you've got the kind of the gray on the outside, which is the shadow. So you've got a reflection within a shadow. So usually a lot of times you see that, like if you're painting something that's glass, like a marble, but you draw a vase, like kind of casting a shadow and also refracting light. Uh, so it's a little unusual to see it on a solid object like this. So it didn't make sense when I was painting it. And so I ended up making a dark shadow because um, it just didn't look right. But I really would like to do it accurately on this painting. So um, I think what I'm going to do is um, wet the area where I want to work and then um, put the mixed gray around the edges of our shadow and put the, the, um, the yellow on the inside. And before I do that, I want to mix up my color. So to get our gray, we'll do the olive green and the crimson and ultramarine blue to kind of gray it. And I had enough dirty mixes on my palette just to pretty much have that together. So we're doing red, green, and, and ultramarine blue. They'll, those will give you a nice gray. And then for the yellow, it'll just be my yellow ochre, which I'll have ready to go there, really watery. And the shadow's really light, too, so I just want to make sure I don't um, I don't overdo it. Now the shadow on that cherry looks a little simpler, so I'm going to just wet the area for that first. And um, it's pretty much starting kind of... It's pretty close to... There, there isn't a lot of shadow in front under the, the cherry, it's kind of to the sides, and it's a little bit more to the right side. Which is odd because it seems like the light's coming in this way, but because of the shadow that's on that one, but according to this photograph, which is why it's really good if you actually have an object to paint from in real life, because then you're gonna see things a lot more accurately. And this isn't a very big space to work in, so I just hope I get it right on the first go because I don't want to frig around with it. <laughs> I just don't want to frig around with it today. Please don't. It's Friday. <laughs> Friday. It's raining out again. So I'll do the outside with my gray. And it's mostly gray over here. There isn't really... Maybe that's why you have the yellow more on this side because you're getting the reflection of the light. And then just a little smidgen of the yellow in the center. And I think it might be one of those situations where it looks weird at first, but then it looks fine once it's dried and you've given your eyes a rest. All right, I can always put more on it, but it's more difficult to take it away. So I'm gonna leave that like that for now and go over to the other one. Uh, Beck M, what are the best exercises a beginner can do to master glazing? Um, maybe make a glazing chart. Um, so you take all your colors and you would make a strip going one way and then you take all your colors making a strip going the other way. That would be um, a good way to do it. Or you can draw shapes and you can fill them in with watercolor. Like you could do hearts and squares and leaf shapes, all different kinds of shapes. And then you can try glazing over, painting them one color and letting them dry and then glazing over with another color. Or you can just paint more because, you know, painting is how you get better at painting.
getting working in a sketchbook too can help because then you don't feel so precious about it. I have to kind of have sit back and look at this at an angle to see where the edge of my paint is so water is so I can add my paint. I'm surprised there aren't a ton of questions today. Well, Moderators must be on the ball. They are, and we've also have a couple other conversations going on about fruit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of other conversations, is anybody watching Twin Peaks, the new Twin Peaks? No, I haven't started it yet. Oh, it's weird. Well, I would expect nothing less. I almost want to say it's so good, but I don't know if it's good yet because it's so weird. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. What, what network is it on? Showtime. Oh, yeah, that's so you, why. and that's the other reason I'm sorry. I don't have Showtime access to Showtime. We get it through Amazon. I like that you can just subscribe to like a channel, you know? Yes. I feel like this needs to be a little bit darker. I'm just adding a little bit of that. Now that looks too dark. There, yeah, we're gonna let that dry and we'll come back to it. Actually, I do need a little more yellow in the middle though. I think that's not nearly as yellow as the other one. Okay, now something else that's a really good um, trick if you're ever hung up. Oh, man, I got paint on my... Oh, we can do that thing where I show you how to fix a, fix paint that's on the... Uh... Perfect. <laughs> Yay. Uh, teachable moments. Love teachable moments. Okay, so I got some paint there. It was probably on my hand, and I probably smeared it across. So what I'm going to do is um, get clean water on my mop and scrub and it of course is crimson which is like the hardest hardest color to remove scrub it and blot it quickly because you don't want just want to spread around that paint oh good it came off there we go so there you go there's how you remove your your uh, paint and keep your hands clean so hopefully it doesn't happen again all right, so sometimes when I'm painting and I'm feeling like I've just been looking at this too long, but I need to finish it, or I want to finish it, um, I will turn everything upside down. So when you turn something upside down, instead of looking at two cherries, you're just seeing shapes. And I find that to be very helpful when I am trying to kind of see something. Now I can, when I'm looking at this upside down, I see, oh, that needs to be way lighter there on this picture. So I can grab my scrubber and I can lighten that. Whereas I might not have noticed how off that value was. And value just means how light or dark something is. So I can go in here and clean this area out a little bit. Uh, Moon Ram, your favorite palette, ceramic, metal, or plastic for watercolors? Um, I, gosh, I, it changes. Um, I really like the John Pike palette, the plastic one, um, because it's a really durable plastic. And that's what I have in my travel box. Um, I like the little flower ceramic palette I recently purchased because it's it's really nice to mix on ceramic, but ceramic's heavy and expensive. So, uh, you know, it depends on when you ask me, honestly. And I don't think any of them are bad choices or wrong choices. And I think everybody's going to have a completely different opinion. So... Um, and mine changes, so I guess I guess I don't have a real definite opinion. I'm gonna soften this too because that looks a little bit uh, wrong. And that little slice looks really too bright, so I'm going to soften that. Even though it is pretty bright there, it just seems a little too like there's a little bit more gradation between the bright and the normal color of the cherry, the actual local color of the cherry. So I'm scrubbing next to the highlight. Okay. 
Okay, and we can use a white gel pen if we do need to pull back some bright highlights at the end. And it doesn't hurt to wait a while on the white gel pen too, because sometimes um, after you've kind of let it sit for a bit and you've looked at it, you can see that it is pretty accurate after all. So now I'm gonna go back in with my red and keeping everything upside down, which hopefully isn't bugging people too badly. I'm gonna start adding in this a uh, little bit more red here and there. get this shape here it's kind of like um it's kind of like where the indent of the uh the cherry is it's starting to come back up into the highlight area and i'll flip it back around in a second i just like to get this new perspective All right, I'm going to flip it around because I'm going to end up putting my hand in it again if I don't. There we go. There's a little bit of a curve there, which I think is cute. And I want to get that in there. All right, so now I am going to sketch on the dew drops. very very uh, gently I don't want to put too much emphasis on them yet uh, Tiffany Gray when I glaze after a section is dry it looks really obvious like hi I am a second layer but when I glaze when it's wet it just mixes all mixes together what gives you will, when you're glazing, you want to be going over a dry layer. Um, I, I bet you just need to kind of give your eyes a break because you're probably, um, it's probably just looking really bold right off the bat. Like, uh, and you're, if you, if you just gave it a minute to kind of sink in and come look at it again in a minute, it would look fine. I'm, I'm betting that's kind of what it is. Um, it could also be that you're glazing over and building up layers slowly. Maybe you need to get some of those darker values in, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Um, get those really deep shadows in on your stem and in some of the crevices there. So when you go back in, you know, and you start to glaze, you're not kind of always startled by how dark it is. You kind of establish that value so you're not worried about it and you can be brave with your glazes. CXDD7, what is the advantage of using watercolor pencils over regular watercolor pans tubes? Um, it, it depends. I mean, um, you it's really great if you like to work small, if you like to rubber stamp, they're really good. Um, you know, because you're just putting out a little pigment at a time, so it's kind of easy to control. They're great for sketching underneath watercolor or acrylic paintings. So, you know, there's there's a lot of advantages, but I, I don't think it's an either or. I think they're, you know, to use with watercolors. For me, anyway. I mean, some people don't use watercolors and they use watercolor pencils. Uh, Haley Hope, what brush were you using to lift up the highlights? Um, it's called a Maxine's Mop. And um, they're, they're kind of, I, I like the quarter inch size, and that size has been difficult to find, but I think Artist Club has it, which is a, a toll painting type website. But it's just like the perfect stiffness for lifting out um, watercolor highlights. Hopefully this isn't a really tedious process for everybody. It is kind of a little bit of a bit of an endeavor. All 
and I'm softening that edge there where I went over it. And I think I will switch to a larger brush and add in some e another bit of color here and there. By going with a bigger brush, I'm going to be making bigger shapes. It's just going to make it seem a little smoother. But I am still tapping. And then we'll make our final shadows in a second. Uh, Ellen Becker, have you ever used Daniel Smith Genuine Watercolors? <clears throat> yes, I have. And that's what I use in my watercolor course, um, the Essential Set of Six. And I have a couple of their sticks. And also, um, actually, I have I have like four, three or four other colors and sticks, and I have um, six other colors and two paints. They're very good paints. Uh, Kendall McCauley, I've lost a lot of my texture when I glazed. How do I bring it back? Uh, just paint it right on top again. So now we're going to mix a nice dark color to put our darkest shadows into our picture. And for that, we are going to use the red that we've been using, the crimson, and some ultramarine blue. Now you can add some of the olive green in there if you want a really dark black, but whenever you do true opposites like green and red, you do run the risk of getting it muddy because you're neutralizing and desaturating the colors. When you mix a purple like this to glaze, you're getting that dark value, but it's not desaturating it as much, so you're not going to run the risk of getting mud as much. So that's why I'm doing that. I'm actually going to switch to um, a smaller brush so because these are the final details. I don't want to do anything that's going to make too big of an impact in case I go overboard. This is number two round mimic. And I'm just looking for my darkest values. And if you have a hard time seeing your darkest values, squint. And and that will show you where the darkest bits are. Because sometimes when you're working with color, it can get very confusing as to what's darker. Because sometimes you're like, well, I'm looking at red, I'm looking at green, I'm looking at blue. How can I tell what's darkest? They're all different colors. By squinting, that will really help. And we're actually getting right to the final stages, so we're almost done. In here, we have a lot of dark. And I think I want this cherry in behind to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to concentrate my uh, shadow on that. I wonder, is anyone painting along with us today? Because this is a perfect pace to paint along to. So if you felt the other ones, other paintings rushed a little too fast, um, this is a really good one because you're there's so much layer building. If you worked a little bit smaller, if you felt like I worked a little fast, if you worked a little bit smaller, you would find that uh, it would be very easy to keep up. And I'm just outlining that dew drop there. And I'm going to put this little bit of a shadow on the bottom of this dewdrop over here. Uh, get the edges of this one here. I think I'm just going to leave it to those three dewdrops because three things look nice in threes. And I want to get a little dark down here. So just be very um, deliberate with these really dark shapes and try not to overdo it. Now I do want a smooth edge on the shadow here, so I'm going to go ahead and paint that. I did grab a little bit more red in that mix, so if it did look a little awkward, it won't be quite so dark. Uh, Moon Ram, how many layers can this paper take? Oh, I don't know. Quite a few. This is an arches, so... Um, as long as you're not scrubbing real hard. Yeah, it even it did, yeah, and this does take scrubbing pretty well, so. I mean, some artists use, like, dozens of layers. 
a photorealistic artists. Crazy amounts of layers. And if this, uh, these shadows that you're putting in end up being a little too bold, you can always glaze over it again with your crimson. So keep that in mind as you're working that if you don't like it, you can do a glaze over and that's going to really mellow everything out. All right, now I'm going to work on the dew drops a little bit. This one here needs a little lifting. So I'm going to go back in with my Maxine's mop. And scrub out the top edge here. And lift. And then for the dew drops over there, I will scrub just a little bit to get that line from the edge of my uh, cherry gone. And I will scrub here a little bit. And I feel like I need a little bit of yellow in that one and a little bit of pink in those. So I feel like I'll scrub a little bit more out to bring it back to a little closer to white with my small brush so I can't get too much into too much trouble. I'm just going to drop in a little bit of yellow there towards the top of that dew drop and a little bit of the crimson. Add some water to it. You don't want it too bold. In there. And now we're going to dry it. And I think I will do some gel pen highlights on it. But you guys might want to wait and um, see how it looks tomorrow before you commit to the gel pen highlights because they are pretty permanent once you put them down. Uh, Moon Ram, can this painting be done on a mixed media paper? Um, yeah, probably because we're not soaking it too bad. You could do this in, with, uh, you know, your Copic markers on marker paper, even following very similar steps. You'll need more markers because you need lighter shades for your lighter washes, but, but definitely. And you could go over this with colored pencil if you felt like you just didn't get the layers that you wanted to. Um, colored pencil goes really nice over watercolors and on this paper as well. And it would be a lot softer than the look of a gel pen. Okay, I'm going to go right ahead and uh, just put some highlights with a gel pen. And then I can do one more wash if I feel like I need it. Um, I'm going to get this little highlight here at the top of this dew drop. And I'm also just going to give it a little bit of slice there just to kind of exaggerate it a little bit. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a highlight up there. And I can smudge that with my fingers if I feel like it's a little too bold. can blend it out a little bit. It does kind of give it a bit of a cartoony look, but I kind of like that. So if you don't, you don't have to do that. And our little, uh, little dew drop here really needs a little highlight. And you can actually wash over the gel pen with water if you feel like you've gotten it too bright. So, um, so we're just going to keep that in mind if you decide that if you get it on there and you're like, oh, I wish I hadn't. And then you can get any place else you feel like you want. A little crispness you can use your gel pen just keep in mind that's going to look really white i think this is even whiter than the um white of your paper because well i'm using a natural white instead of the uh a bright white i usually use a natural white but arches is available in both gel pen's very addicting so i will warn you you might even want to to hold off if you think you might kind of 
go a little too far with it. Okay, I think I do want one more glaze. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the bright uh, red just on its own, and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a A little bit of glaze on this big cherry in front where I had a, where I put a lot of texture and a little of the yellow ochre and then we'll dry it real quick so you can see how it turned out because sometimes it's hard to tell when it's still wet there give it a quick little dry and if anybody has any last minute questions go ahead and pop them in the chat use uh, type the word question in all caps and Sarah will ask me and then we're gonna be done I really like the way this turned out oh, great they look like you could pluck them off the paper <laughs> they kind of look like plums because they're so big I think like that one kind of mm -hmm. looks like a plum <laughs> yeah that's the same. It's the same texture, the same fruit texture mm -hmm. to do a plum or a uh, a cherry. Very similar for an apple. Apple has a little bit more striation. Uh, Diane Murray, when using the coupon from the link for these paintings, can you order anything or only what you list? Oh, you can order whatever you want. Um, some items are at an absolute low price, and you can't. They, the coupon won't. Uh, take any money off but it will count towards the free shipping amount it's it's good on anything if you look for this like a little green circle with like a like a pair of scissors like a coupon it, it says coupon eligible anything with that icon in it you can use um some stuff is just you know either on super sale or marked too low and manufacturers won't let them discount it further so um but so hey yeah. a yeah. coupon is a coupon exactly exactly do we have any other questions uh why do I get small air bubbles when I stipple? Hmm. I bet maybe you didn't rinse your brush out very well last time you washed it. That could be it. Um, or maybe your water bucket has some soap residue in it. Uh, like I don't, I rarely clean my water buckets. Every once in a while I have to because they get real scuzzy, but um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they, they, get, they get just slimy. I just like this, that word scuzzy. They get this like gross slimy coating. I don't even know where it comes it's from. Scuzz. It's scuzz. It's mm scuzz, -hmm. yeah. <laughs> And I, that was it. That was the last question. All right. And there, I'll just show you that uh, the sample one that I did before the live stream. I like these colors better. So this one, we only used four colors. I will make a note in my blog the color that we used. And actually, I will swatch it right on there and cross out the other ones just so I remind myself but um all the resource materials uh, resource materials linked up in the video description or on my blog uh if you need to find the photo or you just need some more information um thank you so much for watching i also have a link in the video description to my class which is on sale for till the end of the month that's like four more days i think four or five more days yeah um so if you were thinking about purchasing that, that's uh, a good time to get it while it's half off. I think that's it. Is there anything I forgot? I think that's it. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and share this video with your artsy friends. Until next time, happy crafting.